Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I must say thanks to Dr. Garg and his uh, entire team who gave me this opportunity of sharing some of my views with you. And more importantly, I would like to set the record straight with due apology from my friend, Partha Bhattacharya, who is chairing the session. You know, before the rest of the world could think of coal to chemicals, India had thought it in late 60s. And Ramgad complex, Mr. Chaudhary is here, he will bear with me. Ramgad coal chemical com complex was conceived and a full detailed project report was prepared by Dr. Lahiri, the then director of Central Fuel Research Institute. Now the name is changed to CIMFR. So, Dr. Lahiri unfortunately died very early and uh, our centralized planning system with due apology again to many people sitting here again became a handicap that we could not progress in that direction. Then of course oil market, gas market, all things. But let me again tell you India thought of coal to chemicals in early 60s. <laughs> So anyway, it's good. So, but what happened, he was right, that uh, we could not think of anything other than power because there's only demand growing and we had to step up the production very fast and there was no choice and good thing was happening on the power side that whatever you dig out, they were taking it and they are taking it now also. Probably they have no option, but now things are changing. So my presentation, I'll fix it to, I'm not talked, uh, she did a very excellent job of taking care of all the technicalities of the subject. So I thank Varitika for her excellent presentation. I'll focus on the need for gasification, why we have to go for it. We have probably third or fourth largest coal resource in the world. And we rank very low in our hydrocarbon resources. So we have to use our coal resources very judiciously. And as you know, the efficiency of conversion coal to power or electricity, all these things, it, somehow we can't touch anything beyond 40 or 45, even best of the efforts. And to reach above 40, you have to go through again different routes rather than the conventional burning. <coughs> Therefore, sorry. Therefore, we have to think of alternative options, particularly for three reasons. A, abundant sources of coal. B, low hydrocarbon resources. <coughs> C, carb this climate change compulsions. All three, three things taken together, they are going to push us to the wall unless we accelerate our thought process towards alternative views of coal so that the energy content of coal, whether you take a carbon route, a hydrogen route, oxygen route, any route, is maximized and taken away. <coughs> That's why, you see, I don't have to read out, you know all that, the people must have read it before that. Now, why coal gasification? Today, half of the electricity generated in the world is on base coal-based. New efficient technologies have been developed, but CO2 emissions plus SOX and NOx still remain a major issue. Coal gasification is a is an in, incomplete combustion of coal. If you do through with air and uh, water, if you do through pyrolysis, is a you can take out more energy. And reaction is very simple, less looks, but when it happens in the reactor, is very very complicated. As you saw what you earlier speaker presented. What prompted the development of gasification? Unreliable supply of and higher prices of crude oil. But now the prices are low again. This is a temporary phase. Let's not be taken away by this. And comparatively low coal to low coal to produce valuable feedstock for liquid products, including diesel and many other downstream chemicals, what you heard just now. Major breakthrough gasification process came through in early 30s and culminated through fissure trope synthesis during Second World War. South Africa, facing the sanctions, developed the technology to its commercial advantage 
and even if today it leads, except that China has gone in many ways in a different directions. Over the year, China has taken the lead, and now the global climate change concerns and uneven distribution of hydrocarbon resources, they are the compelling reason that we should have think of this. This is a very general slide with <coughs> how China has grown to the coal chemical. This is a graph circulated by Asia Chemical, and they hold a conference in Beijing every year. The way the progress is showing on the China it is happening, it's something which is very, very fantastic. Advantage of gasification and pyrolysis route is higher heat utilization as high as 80 percent, higher carbon conversion rate as high as 90 percent, sulfur can be captured and removed as a byproduct, syn gas can be used to produce clean electricity with higher efficiency than all sorts of uh, chemicals and if it is a compulsion you can even capture CO2 and store it or to put it to any use you may require to do it. This is of course general profile of petroleum products which we have in India we are using. You find all this other than the green and red part things can be taken care mostly from coal but steadily slowly we have to develop a technology which suits our coals and you just heard from Vartika that our coals are definitely amenable to gasification because of the high reactivity. Ash is an issue, you can always remove ash, it's a very simple material process which is one can be, it can be washed and taken away. Today natural gas consumption, we are using 81 percent, comes from gas, for naphtha is a small percentage, fuel oil and low sulfur heavy stock is about 10 percent. And requirement of urea is going up, which almost more than 50 percent. And it is only the subsidy which is carrying it on. People are making, indicating a lot of profitability of urea market, but it's not so. So we have to have coal gasification as a route for production of urea. <coughs> Sorry. Now recent developments in India, which are very encouraging, Jindal Steel and Park, they have set up a commissioned a plant for DRI. The Reliance is also going ahead in a big way. Newly formed joint venture between Coal India, RCFL, Gale and FCI is setting up, or rather reviving you can say, but is really setting up for a virtually greenfield project, fertilizer project in Talchir. NFL, EIL, FCI, JV is working on reviving Ramagunda fertilizer. These are very progressive and laudable initiatives taken by the government to reduce the import dependence on urea, ammonia, etc. But here I must add, these are very symbolic and startups. Unless there is a push, particularly today because of the low oil and gas prices, government has to step in. Unless government intervenes, I'm not really promoting that we should subsidize or anything. All they have to make it a little more free. At least now if somebody can invest in a ammonia plant coal based or even fertilizer plant <coughs> provided he is sure of getting coal. The most uncertain commodity today is coal itself in the country because so many restrictions are there and we have uh, held everything very close to the chest and I don't think unless we open up the coal sector free and unrestricted both for mining and marketing and usage we will make any progress in the, this direction. Even this FCI, the RCFL, Gale and FCI, which Coal India is a partner, they have not yet got a block allotted to them in Talchir. I don't know what will happen to Ramangundu because there is no coal in Singrani area to give for this plant which they are going to revive. You have to carry coal from elsewhere, maybe from Talchir. So unless government steps in and liberalizes its coal distribution or coal allocation policy, I would say. These all will remain on piece of paper as it remained in the past 40 years since Dr. Larry thought of it. I'm sorry to make such remarks which seem to be negative, but somebody will have to think over seriously. And why India should push gold gasification? 
we already discussed, but still let me repeat it, is a viable energy alternative, abundant coal resources, volatile prices of oil and gas. Coal prices are stable. Of course, this is the only country where it, they are increasing, but nowhere else they are increasing. They are all coming down everywhere. Long-term energy security, and it's a low emission approach. Suitable for fertilizer uh, production, natural gas can re be replaced as easily. Just to continue those very things, what Vartika has already stated, there is only virtual repetition. Just to indicate a number, a report which pr was prepared by National this Energy Technology Lab USA Pittsburgh, they have recorded the 115 operating gasifiers in China and 60 more under construction. And I'm told some 130 are in planning stage. China has a target of produce, uh, converting a 1 billion ton of coal using it other routes by 2025. By the time, they say 2020, but they say it could happen up to 2022 or 25. Out of the 5 billion tons of coal they produce, 1 billion they are going to convert and use it through oil, gas, and coal to chemical routes. And why India should push, again, is repetition. But still, a very small indicator of a number. In the last five years, the import bill has been $50 billion equivalent only on our urea, methanol, and natural gas. You can see the enormity of the foreign exchange, which is going away out of the country when we have a resource. That's not into coal imports. Yes. I agree with you. This is, of course, a, one has to take it seriously. It looks very simple. Coal is very valuable if it's used right. C is for convenient. O is for obtainable, easily. A is for abundant. And L is for low cost. Thank you.